the President's press conference from the Cabinet Room of the White House, September 21, 1966. All the bills are in the Congress, you will know what the fiscal situation will be. You seem to be indicating that this may involve a tax increase. Is that so? No, uh, I haven't indicated that. I have said that when the authorization bills are passed, the appropriations are made, we'll then see how much we can adjust to those measures, and we'll carefully review them. And arrive at the total that will be spent, then we'll calculate our revenues and we'll uh, do our best to uh, uh, bring our revenues in line with our expenditures. Mr. President, one of the uh, factors that has been mentioned in trying to, to arrive at these final figures is how much more the war in Vietnam is going to cost. Could you tell us how you're going to arrive at that and at what time you expect to be able to make that decision? We uh, have appropriated enough funds to run us through June of 1967, assuming that the war would be over at that time. We are carefully reviewing that each day. We are determining what our expenditures are there in the way of uh, materials and planes and helicopters and men. We'll be making constant reviews from that uh, of that every week, every month. I've been discussing it some this morning with Admiral Sharp, who commanded in that area. I'll be asking Secretary McNamara and his people for figures through the fall. We can't tell now how much we're going to get from the Congress, because the Defense Department bill of uh, in the nature of some $60 billion has not been sent to us yet. After we get that, we'll see uh, how much of it is uh, for uh, what purposes and make any adjustments we can, and then uh, we hope uh, make the best estimates we can as to what additional monies we'll need, uh, uh, and so inform the Congress. Mr. President, can you tell Sir, us how uh, much the war has cost today? Uh, Mr. Bailey. Sir, uh, when you signed the auto safety bill recently, you expressed the hope that the companies would absorb the cost of new safety devices. Ford came out yesterday with price increases and said that the new safety equipment was a substantial part of it. Could we get your comment on that? I am having a Council Economic Advisor study the statement that Ford uh, released. They have not made a report to me yet. I naturally regret that it was necessary to have any increase in prices. I uh, would have hoped that uh, these businessmen could have uh, foregone the necessity of increasing prices. I ask that uh, they do that, but uh, they are free to uh, make their own prices, and they did, and we're now analyzing what effect uh, they'll have on the economy. Mr. Mr. President, uh, the uh, Republican House leadership issued a lengthy document which in effect says the Vietnam War is Johnson's war and that you're not leveling with the American people on how far you intend to go. Could you comment on that report? No, I, I made a comment on that report and others like it. Uh, one of my recent press conferences, you're going to hear a good many uh, political partisan statements uh, from uh, some of the House members uh, uh, between now and November. And I don't think that uh, you serve the nation or uh, the the uh, uh, the world by uh, debating uh, uh, statements of that kind with these particular individuals. Mr. President, Mr. President uh, there are reports now that the North Vietnamese may be interested in pursuing Wu Thon's proposals for peace. Could you tell us, sir, your reaction today to Wu Thon's proposals? We are very anxious to pursue uh, any proposal that would interest uh, the North Vietnamese. We have no indication that uh, they are interested in sitting down and talking. But we welcome any opportunity to do that, as we have all along. Mr. President, in that connection, Pope Paul VI has proclaimed October as a month of prayer for peace. You have reiterated again your desire for unconditional peace talks. Uh, do you see any chance of these two proclamations coming together and leading to a bombing pause in October? I am very happy to see the Pope uh, take the interest that he has. I want to do anything I can to 
encourage that interest and to support him in any moves that he may make uh, so far as the United States is concerned and our allies are concerned we are very anxious to participate in any negotiations that uh, uh, the aggressors are willing to uh, uh, participate in and I think it's the general feeling of all the nations of the world with the possible exception of uh, two and uh, we will uh, do anything we can to encourage the Pope to cooperate with him, to support the uh, uh, negotiations. Mr. President, do you still hope to visit most of the 50 states before the November election? Uh, I would, of course, like to be in all of the states all the time. Uh, your implication, your question is that uh, uh, I've stated that I uh, plan to. Uh, I think I stated that at the rate that we had visited other states in the time left for us, we, it was possible to go into all of those states. We have no plans to. We want to visit every state that we can whenever we can. But until uh, we have a uh, uh, schedule clear here, and I can be away from Washington, I'm not going to firm up any engagements. When I do, I will announce those engagements. and. Uh, uh, go every place I can. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. <clears throat> Senator Jerkson said yesterday that you hadn't really tried very hard to persuade him to drop his opposition to the Civil Rights Bill. Would you comment on that, sir? No. Uh, uh, I haven't read Senator Jerkson's statement, and uh, I think the, uh, uh, the President's position in connection to that measure is abundantly clear. I have uh, tried to uh, persuade the Congress to uh, embrace my viewpoint. I'm very happy that a majority of both houses in a democracy where majority rule should prevail uh, have uh, supported uh, the measure that uh, we recommended. And I believe in uh, due time uh, uh, that measure will be again considered and favorably acted upon and will become the law of the land and justice to all of our citizens will uh, not only be guaranteed, but will prevail. President, uh, several times this recently you've talked about bringing expenditures in line with revenues. Are you planning on a balanced budget for 67? I think that we'll have to see what the Congress appropriates and what our review uh, uh, indicates. Of course, uh, uh, I can't tell at this time because I don't know whether there will be any add-ons to that budget or not. I don't know what the needs of Vietnam will be, and it would just be sheer speculation that I think would have little value. Mr. President, a uh, long list of petitioners, including some fairly common people, have expressed the fear that West Germany might get a finger on the nuclear trigger as a result of your upcoming talks with Chancellor Erhard. What is your response to that? Uh, I don't have any such fear. and. Uh, I will have a full discussion with Chancellor Earhart on the problems of uh, our respective countries, but uh, I don't anticipate uh, any agreement of, uh, of the nature they fear uh, being uh, consummated. Mr. Mr. President, could you please give us your assessment of the war in Vietnam, uh, how it compares with the situation a year ago, and are there any chances of having it finished by June of 67. I don't uh, think that I can add much to what you already know, and whatever I said I think would probably be held against me if I didn't just hit it on the nose. I think that uh, you can observe from the papers each day what's happening. Admiral Sharp and General Westmoreland uh, uh, think that we're going about as they had expected. They were pleased with uh, the successes that our men have achieved out there. Uh, they feel very good about uh, uh, the results that they've been able to obtain, and we have uh, uh, definite uh, uh, plans that uh, uh, we believe will uh, 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 be achieved, but uh, uh, just to precisely say what day uh, uh, these plans will be achieved is a very difficult thing in war. and. Uh, I don't think any commander-in-chief has ever been able to do that. Uh, we seek peace. We'd like to see the shooting stop tomorrow. We'd like to talk uh, this thing out instead of fight it out. 
But uh, as I've said so many times, unless the aggressor is willing to give up his aggression and sit down and talk, uh, we have no choice except to try to defend and to protect uh, uh, these uh, uh, liberty-loving free people. Now, we're going to do that. And how long the aggressor uh, will uh, uh, maintain his aggression uh, will uh, depend on his decision more than ours. Mr. President. Mr. President, the Latin American nations which originated the idea seem to be getting together on plans for the summit conference, which you expect to attend, I understand. I wonder if you could give us your idea of what the accomplishments of such a meeting might be. I uh, think that uh, we're now working on the plans and the proposals uh, that uh, uh, are being formulated. Uh, they're not concrete yet. I think that when the heads of uh, uh, nations come together, uh, they're always, uh, uh, it's always necessary to have an agenda and to have uh, the matter pretty well planned out in advance. Our people are doing that now. We think that uh, there are a good many subjects that are deserving of the consideration of the heads of state. They will, of course, uh, be explored by the foreign ministers in their meeting and uh, later, uh, if uh, we think desirable, by the heads of state. But we haven't reached the point yet where we could announce an agenda or could even outline for you uh, uh, what uh, proposals will be made by individual countries. That's being worked upon by the staffs. Uh, and the foreign ministers and the State Departments of the various uh, nations. Mr. President. Mr. President, there's a little debate here about what you meant the other evening when you said you wanted to... Uh, Who is debating? Now, let me see. I want to see which side to get on. Well, we all have to work up the uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Vice President reported out there that you had mentioned the labor leaders the other evening. As long as you were president, uh, he wanted uh, you wanted him by your side. Uh, there's been some debate in the newspapers uh, about whether that... I don't think I would government. get in that, Hugh. I'd just uh, let you all go on and debate. <laughs> Mr. President? Mr. President, uh, speaking today and yesterday about new recommendations in terms of the economy to Congress, did you have in mind uh, the hope that you get something together before they go home for election, call them back after, or next year? I didn't year's have any timetable, Max. Mr. President? I have in mind that as soon as we can get the authorization bills, and as soon as the appropriation bills are available, they will be carefully reviewed. Then we'll make our judgment, then we'll immediately submit it to the Congress. Now, if you can tell me when those bills will be received and uh, when the departments will be able to conclude their study of them, I can tell you it won't take me very long. Mr. President, uh, are you going to submit uh a new civil rights bill to the next session of Congress, sir, and if so, will it contain an open housing provision? I uh, will tell you in my State of the Union message uh, our program for the next session of Congress. Uh, I think that you can be reasonably sure if no action is uh, concluded uh, between now and the State of the Union message that I will have uh, recommendations in that field, but I don't... Uh, I don't really know that uh, uh, we ought to try to spell them out this morning because we'll be working on that from now until January, and uh, we'll spell out all of our recommendations for the 90th Congress in the January message. Mr. President, will the administration seek to salvage any of the other titles like federal juries or anti-terrorism sections in this session of Congress? I don't know. I don't know what uh, the action of the Congress will be. I haven't... Uh, reviewed that with the Attorney General or uh, the uh, uh, leadership on the Hill. Uh, all I know is the vote that took place on cloture and whether the Congress would be uh, disposed to again consider civil rights, uh, I don't know. Mr. President? You, you can get the answer to your question about uh, the possibility of uh, further moves in that direction uh, uh, more from the Congress. Mr. President? Yeah. Sir, we really have not been told how much the war in Vietnam is costing and how much it's been costing from day to day. This question has been put to Mr. McNamara earlier in the year. He said it's almost impossible to tell. And lately, U.S. officials again said that they couldn't quite tell us. I don't you think the American people ought to be told, and I'm sure you know. <laughs> Uh, 
I think that uh, the Congress, through the Appropriations Committee and Authorizations Committee, have had very full uh, details on our expenditures in men and money and materials in Vietnam. And I would commend to you some homework. Go read the hearings. Mr. President, Mr. President could, uh, you, you mentioned that there seemed to be an indication among all nations of a desire to seek a negotiated settlement or to talk peace, uh, except for two. Uh, have you noticed any change of attitude on the part of the Soviet Union or willingness to aid in this process? I haven't noticed any change in attitude. I have felt all along that uh, uh, they would like to see uh, uh, in negotiated uh, uh, negotiations and discussions uh, rather than what's happening. Mr. President, there are a number of vacancies in the State Department. Can you give any indication of when those will be filled? Well, uh, one became vacant yesterday, the Under Secretary. Uh, Mr. Ball, and that will be filled uh, right now. The Attorney General, Mr. Nicholas Katzenbach, will resign and become the new Undersecretary when confirmed uh, uh, by the Senate. <laughs> Can you tell us when you're going to, uh, who you're going to appoint to the Attorney General? No, I haven't reached a decision on that yet. I'm uh, talking about the number of vacancies that uh, Mr. Child referred to. Uh, Mr. Ball wrote me on the 17th, and I promptly responded and uh, accepted his resignation. He's had a very outstanding career, and he will be available to work with us from time to time. We have known for some time that he wanted to leave in the fall, and uh, he established the date in his letter, and uh, I've asked the Attorney General to uh, accept this post, and he has agreed to do so. Uh, I've asked uh, uh, Mr. Eugene Rostow to also become Under Secretary of uh, State. Uh, in the position formerly occupied in this administration by Secretary Harriman and Secretary Mann. As you know, uh, Mr. Eugene Rostow is uh, former dean of Yale Law School, and he and Mr. Katzenbach are, are both uh, very interested in the international field. Mr. Katzenbach was professional professor of uh, international history for a period of years, has written uh, uh, in that field, and he and Mr. Rostow will work very closely together as the undersecretaries uh, of the department. Uh, Mr. Rostow only concluded his arrangements with uh, the Yale University last evening. I'm asking Mr. Foy Kohler to return from Moscow to succeed Mr. Alex Johnson uh, in the deputy undersecretary's place, and these nominations will go to the Senate very shortly. Mr. President, do you regard this as a promotion for Mr. Katzenbach? I hadn't uh, uh, spent much time on whether it was what it was. It's a great opportunity to serve the country and the world, and Mr. Katzenbach's one of the most uh, competent and most selfless men I know. And he said to me shortly after I became president that he would serve the president in any capacity where the president thought he could be useful. And he's not concerned with uh, he's not concerned with title or uh, with promotions or demotions. He's concerned with uh, serving the interests of the nation. Mr. President, do you have a replacement for Mr. Kohler in mind yet, sir? No, no. I uh, have I'll have to talk to Mr. Childs and get this little State Department straightened out, and then we'll go down to Mr. President. Mr. President, is the fact that Ramsey Clark's father is on the Supreme Court rule him out as an Attorney General? I I wouldn't get into that. I I haven't made any decision on that. As I said to you before, sir, the prospects for a treaty on outer space, which appeared fairly bright a month ago, seem to be a little bit clouded by some recent Soviet uh, U.S. exchanges on on particular provisions that remain to be negotiated. Do you still feel hopeful that the treaty can be signed this fall? I do. President, 
Uh, can you uh, tell us what happened to your hopes announced last year for a new maritime policy and what recommendations can we, we expect and when? Well, they kind of went astray in the House of Representatives in connection with the new transportation department. We hope that we'll be able to uh, get the Senate to act next week on a uh, new transportation department. When we do, uh, we'll reconcile the differences between the Senate and the House bill, and uh, I hope to be able to name a new Secretary of Transportation whose uh, job it will be to develop such policy. President, do you expect to get any more recommendations from your Labor Management Advisory Committee on guideposts, and do you plan to expand its work in any one? Yes, I think that we will be conferring with the labor management people uh, frequently from time to time. This is a very difficult problem when we have full employment. Uh, we know that when most people have jobs uh, at good wages, uh, that uh, we have problems with pricing. And the labor management people are studying it. They're working on it. The individuals are making suggestions to me from time to time, and uh, they have uh, made some uh, collectively. We will uh, look to them for their cooperation, and I have no doubt but what we'll get it. I just hope that all the leaders of industry in this country and the leaders of labor in this country will uh, not uh, uh, increase prices or increase wages beyond uh, the increased productivity, because when they do this, uh, it makes problems for the rest of the nation. And uh, we are trying to do our best to uh, mm -hmm. practice uh, restraint. Will that serve the part of your discussion with Mr. Meaning later today? Yes, yes, we'll President discuss President that along with a number of other matters. President, uh, Senator Kennedy of uh, New York has suggested it's a mistake for you to dwell so much on the accomplishments of your administration and the prosperity of the country instead of to focus more on the things that still need to be done. Could you mm -hmm. comment, sir? Yes, we're trying to do that uh, uh, every day. We have submitted a program on things that need to be done, and, and we're doing them. And uh, We have uh, passed about 70 measures this year on uh, things that need to be done, and uh, we have some 10 yet to be acted upon. And uh, I agree that uh, we ought to have a program and that we ought to try to get it passed if possible, and I'm rather pleased uh, at uh, the success that we have achieved so far, and I'm very grateful to the cooperation of all the members of the Congress. Uh, Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs>